This is Pastor George Pearson's welcome to a special edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, Faith for Our Nation. We are here with some tremendous guests, which I'm going to introduce to you in just a moment. But I want you to know that we are standing for our nation. We are believing God for our nation. And we have some very important dates that are coming up. Primary elections are happening as well as the midterm election. And so we're going to be talking about on the broadcast this week how important it is that we as believers cast our vote in this nation and that we stand for righteousness and that we believe God. And and to help me do that, first of all, I have my co-host for the week, which um, Buddy Pilgrim, who is a dear, dear friend of ours, dear friend of this ministry, but he is the, the leader of Integrity Leadership, which is a ministry that reaches out uh, to business people, to the body of Christ, where business principles are concerned. He's also been involved in corporate leadership through the years, as well as the political arena. We'll talk a little bit about that with him. And uh, he is a, a board member of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And he is in, in present right now, he is the strategic advisor and special assistant to the executive officers of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, which includes me. So, <laughs> Buddy Pilgrim, I welcome you. Thank you, George. We're so glad that you're here. And then uh, our guest today and this week is Bishop Keith Butler. And he is the pastor of Word of Faith International Christian Church in Southfield, Michigan. He has been uh, not only involved in the Christian world, but also in the political world. He was a De Detroit City Councilman. He ran for U.S. Senate. He's on the executive board of Christians United for Israel. And uh, we were just talking before we, we started rolling here, the cameras, and we, we, he just returned from uh, all places in Europe, reaching out there. He has churches everywhere, overseas churches, and has a work that goes around the world. Bishop Keith Butler, I welcome you. I stretch my hand across <laughs> this long table. <laughs> Glad to be here. It's an honor as always. And, and we are, we're so thankful for you and so thankful for really all that you're doing for the body of Christ. It is amazing what all that you're involved in. And, and let the people know this trip that you just took, just tell them some of the places that you've been ministering. Um, Greece, where else? You were? Well, we were in Athens, Greece, and we uh, ministered. We have a church that we planted there about a year ago in Athens. And then we ministered to another church uh, elsewhere in Athens that uh, had us come by. And we just came back from also the Czech Republic where we hosted 60 Russian speaking pastors from all across Europe to mm -hmm. train them, uh, mm -hmm. develop them, uh, get them ready. And uh, those, of course, some of them are senior pastors, others are uh, developing up. Uh, and we also are in, in Sofia, Bulgaria, where we uh, also plant, uh, well, we operate with a church and assisting and help build the church there right. in Sofia, right. uh, Bulgaria, that is uh, ministering all over and is spreading into other parts of Bulgaria. And so we just spent the, uh, uh, last seven, eight days over there and got here and just got over here. So <laughs> glad to be here. Well, today. we sure, we sure do appreciate it. And Buddy, I'm so glad that you're here with us. I so appreciate Buddy Pilgrim. He is, since Terry and I became CEOs of the ministry uh, last year, um, shortly thereafter, Buddy came on board. And it's so good to have, as, as I say, a board member embedded <laughs> within the, the uh, executive team. And he is, he's a consultant for us, as he has been a consultant for many different organizations, um, especially when you have an individual that has run billion, excuse me, billion dollar corporations. It's good to have him close by. I like that billion dollar <laughs> anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, so, <laughs> <clears throat> but, Buddy, you have been involved, and that's where Terry and I really got to know you, was mm -hmm. in the involvement that you had in the political realm. And you have such a, an unusual connection. Of course, you served on the Ted Cruz campaign, presidential yeah. campaign, yeah. Um, in, in, in stirring up the faith arena. Yeah, in, uh, in Senator Cruz's campaign, my specific role was I was the national director for uh, uh, outreach for, for faith and religious liberty. And I led the outreach to pastors, ministers, and business leaders who were committed people of faith, mm -hmm. Christians and committed conservative Jews as well, to reach out to that community and get them engaged in right. the election. And of course, once Senator Cruz didn't win the nomination for the Republican side, then my role became to help 
get Christians involved in supporting, in, in my opinion, President Trump or candidate Trump right. at the time, right. and to get engaged in the election. So, but I've been involved in conservative politics for many, many years, going back to the early 1990s in a variety of different campaigns. It is amazing. Sometimes we're in a meeting and he'll look down, pick up his phone, say, excuse me, and it's some famous politician <laughs> on the phone. And the connections that you do have are amazing. And as well as you, I mean, you as city councilman and then running for the U.S. Senate, I, I, I cannot imagine what that is like to run for U.S. Senate. Uh, do, you re do you recommend that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it better be God told you it to do it. It better be God. Uh, running a, a statewide uh, is a, uh, a two-year commitment at a minimum. It yeah. takes two years out of your life. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes millions of dollars. Uh, you run on three, four hours of sleep. Uh, and it better be God. And you deal with uh, all kinds of people, some very righteous, and some, well, hallelujah. <laughs> so, and everything in between. Yep. And probably the most unseemly part of it to me, if you're not independently wealthy. Uh, now, when I ran, the uh, contribution limit was $2,100. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is today. I'm, Eight, I, maybe? I, yeah, I've uh, yeah. been out uh, from a candidate for a long time. But, uh, but you have to individually, you have to ask people for money. Yeah. That goes yeah. crosswise to me. I never ask a man for anything. I believe God for it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but because there are campaign rules and laws and reporting and all that, so you have to do it. It's, you know. But the Lord told you to do it. There'll be a grace for it. Sure, sure. And you were, you know, David Barton has encouraged ministers to be yeah. involved in the political realm, whether it's voicing their, their beliefs, uh, preaching about it, ministering about it, or yeah, actually getting involved in it. And the two of you have really done that. And, you know, Brother Copeland and I have talked about, again, since President Trump has, has Donald Trump has stepped into the office of president, one of the things that he has done is just really open the door for us as believers to just speak what we believe. Well, the Johnson and, Amendment uh, has been removed. Yes. So, yeah. so now uh, without uh, penalty, a uh, pastor can stand up and express his political beliefs if, that, if he chose sure. or she chose. Sure. So. There's, there's a wave of involvement from the Christian community that began in the 2016 elections yes. that I think is going to continue. And it's a significant wave. The, the work that I was talking about a minute ago that I did as the National Director for Faith and Religious Liberty for Ted Cruz, you mentioned politicians that I know. What I think is more important than some of the politicians that I know and have known for years are, I've been blessed to get to know a lot of faith leaders around the country. Most of the ones you see on television from Ralph Reed to Tony Perkins to James Dobson to Kenneth Copeland and yes, yes. all kinds of other national leaders around the country. I've been blessed to know for many, many years. I've got a very unique relationship with people that cut across all denominational um, uh, groups. I, I have Southern Baptists that are wonderful friends. I have Pentecostals mm -hmm. that are wonderful friends. Mm -hmm. I have Word of Faith people that are friends. And what I saw in this last election cycle is people who, like Keith, who are men of the Word, like you, who are men of the Word, who got involved because they saw that the course of our nation depended on whether or not the Christian community, and, and I'll just say people of faith, that yeah. broader term, conservative, yeah. dedicated Jews as well as Christians, got involved and began to vote based on the things that are taught in this Word and take those values to the voting booth. And that's what changed the course of this nation. I knew before I ever got involved in Senator Cruz's campaign mm -hmm. that if we didn't get the largest uh, quantity, the largest percentage of Christians engaged and voting yes. in the 2016 mm -hmm. elections, no conservative, no person that shared our values would win. And if we did get them involved, no person that shared our values could lose. Yeah. And that is specifically yeah. why we had the largest percentage of evangelical Christians who voted in the 26 elections than had ever voted in the history of this nation. And it changed the course of the nation, Yes, I believe. It really has. Uh, do you see that? Well, yeah, uh, 2016 is no, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, the media gushes about uh, all the people who came forth in the heartland, and that's true, that's should. I mean, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, people who voted normally uh, voted differently than normal. but. He's correct. There was a huge percentage of Christians who felt as though their nation was endangered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so they, they came out and uh, they didn't just pray, 
they participated in the vote. And it, uh, and it was a very close election, actually. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I think the uh, church made a difference. Yeah, it did. Happened. And, you know, when we had our America Stands, the election coverage in the spirit of faith, you actually called the election. Yeah. I think you were, the, <laughs> I think you were the first one. Yeah, I think I was the first one. You were the one that called yeah. the election. Yeah. And uh, I was just looking at all the data that uh, we had behind the scenes, you know. So to me, it was clear. When I saw key districts in like Michigan, which I really know, Yes. <laughs> and when, when I saw places that I know yeah, there's yeah. no way, yeah. when I saw those go red, oh, it's yeah. the people in Michigan yeah. are very, very similar to the ones in Pennsylvania. Very similar. And very similar to uh, places like Wisconsin in terms of the type of people you're talking about, these precincts. And I knew if Michigan was going that way, I'm sure the rest of the places where so it was easy well, to call it. Our intention is to do America Stands for the midterm elections because these, and this is what we want to get to in this week, how important those midterm elections are and how easy it would be to, for interest to just totally drop. That's one of the big dangers. And that's why we have to, that's why we're on this broadcast today is to, to sound the alarm so to speak, for people to get on board and to make that same decision that was made during the yeah. presidential election that we need to make that during this election because I remember talking to Brother Copeland about the midterm elections and I said those midterm elections are as, as important as the presidential election and he of course he spoke up and said no they're more important. Yeah, yeah these uh, uh, Christians unfortunately are, uh, are not like uh, our opponents. Our opponents understand you have to stay in the battle and you can be in this battle for decades to get something done. Yeah. Uh, those who wanted to uh, have abortion and, and uh, same-sex marriage had been engaged in doing this since, yes. since way back 1914, 1917. I mean, you can go way back. And they fought decade after decade. And then once they achieved what's, what they wanted, they continued to try to expand mm. what they have. Mm -hmm. And what Christians yep. typically yep. do is they'll come out and they'll vote for an election like that. And then it's, oh, we've done our duty. And then they'll retreat yep. and not understand. You have to stay in this fight every election, rest your life, if that's what you want to see in, the, in your nation. So tell us, now this is, in coming into this particular discussion about these midterm elections, the primary elections, and that's why we've asked you to come on the broadcast with us as well as, as Buddy. But what, tell us what the Lord has put on your heart about this. What can you share with us concerning the importance of this? The first thing I think uh, believers need to understand is, is the law of the seed. Before, you, before we even start talking about issues, mm. Genesis 8:22 says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Your vote is a seed and it brings harvest to you, yes. to your family, and to your nation. And so you need to understand that, that if you don't plant your seed to the wow. ground, plant someone seed. else's seed that may not share your values is planted and brings about that <clears throat> harvest. Yeah. I know God will hold us accountable for this. Galatians chapter 6 tells us the same thing in the New Testament. It tells us, as the man sows, he shall also reap. Right. And it says, sow to the spirit and reap life, sow to the flesh and reap death. Mm. Which is why my second point is that Christian has to determine Colossians 3, 2. Coloss I just want to read it too. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2 should always determine what you do regarding the, regarding voting. Yeah, amen. Colossians 3, 2 reads as follows here. It says, set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. So a Christian has to understand or decide, is your first commitment to the kingdom of God or to yourself? Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Oh, and, that's good. And what does that mean? See, so because most people vote based on, including Christians, most of them vote on pocketbook issues and they vote on things uh, that, that they think affects them and their family. Mm -hmm. But if you're a believer, and see, oftentimes people don't understand what that word kurios means, Lord. See, when you say Jesus is Lord, which is the mantra of this ministry, when you say that, it, not only does it mean master, the word Lord also means controller. Mm. See, so 
when you say Jesus is Lord, what you're saying is that Jesus, God, is the one that controls everything I do. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to your own understanding right. in all your ways, which would include voting. Acknowledge him, he shall direct your path. I, I, I found out uh, about this uh, in a very interesting way after I was first called to pastor Word of Faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was a, a 23 years old when I first started pastoring uh, years ago. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, and uh, of course we had our first church and uh, got our first church building and uh, we had just got into it and this is, we're talking about the 1980 elections, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so, you know, I, I never even thought about how I was going to vote. I mean, as far as I was concerned, it was predetermined I was going to vote in the presidential election. I mean, I never even thought about anything different. Right. right. And uh, I wasn't even thinking about it. I was over at the church and I was praying, not even praying about the election. And I heard the Lord say to me, the same voice that called me to the ministry, mm -hmm. the same voice that told me what Bible school to go to, mm -hmm. the same voice that told me to go back to Detroit, the same voice that told me to open the church. Yes. That same voice said to me, vote for so-and-so. Now, I would have <clears throat> never wow. considered voting for so-and-so under any circumstance. I wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't even cross my mind. And he said, vote for so-and-so. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do what? <laughs> it, was, it was a shock. <laughs> Just a huge, it was just, a, I can't tell you how much that was a shock to me. That just yeah. turned my world upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after I got over the shock and, <laughs> and I went, well, I know that was the Lord. And I went, and I'm a Bible teacher. Uh, let me go back and see. That's when I started doing some research and mm -hmm. I was shocked to find out how the candidate I was going to vote for yeah. was going crosswise wow. to God on all the issues. Even though this person would have, from my background in history, what yeah. would have been yeah. where I would just went normally. I didn't know anybody wouldn't have gone that direction, right? Uh, and then the person who I wouldn't have voted for, almost all the issues, they were with God. We'll talk about issues during this week. Yeah. We're with God almost on all the issues. And I went, oh. Uh, well, four years later, I wound up with the person I would not have voted for. I wound up running their state, uh, in my state, I wound up running their minority campaign for them for that election. And of course, that person won, who the Lord to, told me to vote for him four years later. Mm -hmm. uh, I wound up uh, doing stuff for their uh, reelection campaign. So, you know, uh, God may surprise you with what he may tell you to do. Yeah. The, the very idea yeah. that God cares about who you vote for and yeah. that he'll tell you who to vote for is foreign to a lot of people. It's foreign to a lot of Christians. It, when you said that, it made me think back a few years ago when a, a man was speaking to me about some business dealings that I told him I was praying about. Now, the man I was speaking to professes to be a Christian. And I said, I was praying about these issues. And here's what he said back to me. And this isn't proper English, but I'll never forget the quote. He said, buddy, let me tell you something. God don't care about how many chickens you process. I was in the chicken business. And he don't care about the decisions you make on the job. He cares about what you do for the kingdom. And when you think about that, it may sound like, well, okay, yeah, he cares about kingdom things more. No, he cares about every decision we make, every decision we make mm -hmm. in business and every decision we make about who we vote for. And he will tell us, just like he told you, who to vote for because he's given us the standard uh, against which we need to measure every candidate. And yeah. if we measure yeah. it against this standard, yeah. he'll give us the right answer every right. time. Yeah, the That's Bible right. is, the yep. Bible is God speaking to you. Okay? Yep. And his principles in the earth are manifested based upon whether or not believers are willing to employ those principles or not. Proverbs 14:34 says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Well, the only way you get righteousness in a, in a democratic right. organization, a uh, democratic uh, system of government, is that people have to plant seed to righteousness, which means they have to vote. Okay, and this, this nation's political uh, approach was based upon the Bible. Okay, yeah. so when you go and, and read how 
uh, even with Moses and how eventually things got, got yes. set in order, so many over so many yes. over so many. Well, uh, our democracy is based on that's been the worldwide experiment that's been the most successful because it's the closest to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, so you need to understand, first of all, before we talk about issues, your vote is a seed and it will bring you harvest. Yeah. 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 The second thing, your commitment must be to the kingdom of God, God first, before yourself. Now, then the third issue becomes, then you vote on kingdom issues first. Amen. Now, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His, it's not even it, said His yes. righteousness yes. 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 and all these things will be added unto you. See, again, that's that seed time and harvest, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because He'll add to you if you seek the kingdom yep. first. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay, so it is a direct seed, kind of seed time and harvest. Something else about this, praise God. I don't believe in election year conversions. Okay, buddy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> the Bible said oh. you, you, you know a tree by the fruit it bears, <laughs> yes, yeah. right? Uh, in every campaign cycle, Never people, so-and-so uh, prayed with so-and-so and they got born again yeah. during, yeah. during, yeah, during yeah. the election year. I don't believe in election year conversions, okay? <laughs> I just don't believe in them. Uh, I know how politicians work. Okay, I was involved in, I was involved at the top of one of the political parties for 27 years. Yeah. Yeah, I know how they work. Okay, so, yeah. no. <laughs> you so got with to. that, with that, we have less than a minute now. Oh, okay, all so right. So we're going to, we're going to pick up on that though. Right. So our seed, our vote is our seed. Yes, sir. And we get a harvest from it. Mm -hmm. And that harvest has everything to do with our future. Mm. has everything to do with what our life is going to turn out to be and what is going to happen. That's why it's so important that we vote in the primaries, that we vote in this election. And when we come back tomorrow, we'll, we'll pick up where you left off and continue on with that. This is so important. It's just, we just cannot reiterate how important this is. That's powerful what you said. Vote kingdom <laughs> issues first. Yeah, third kingdom first. issues first. And vote. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege and the honor it is to be in this nation and the privilege and the honor and responsibility that we have to vote. Every one of us who are watching this will vote in these primaries and in this election. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise God. I'll be right back with you. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.